Information literacy is a critical skill in the 21st century. Think of it. The amount of information that is doubling every 18 months out there on the internet. The ability to make sense of it all. So to analyze, synthesize, create information and do so in an ethical way. And this, this aspect of sense making is all the more critical nowadays than ever before. And that's what we're here to decide on and to design. And our group's been talking about uh, information literacy, about the ability to find, sort, and evaluate different pieces of information uh, uh, during a research process. Uh, we felt that the best way to, to get there is to make sure things are embedded into the curriculum, that research projects are embedded into different subjects, different year groups, that kids uh, do research regularly, scaffolded through the years, and to ensure that departments and year group teachers are working with, um, are working with the librarians and the IT coordinators to plan these activities, to ensure kids have a consistent message, uh, to ensure that kids are getting the skills scaffolded and pro uh, skills that are proper to their, uh, to their age. Uh, and also just to make sure that uh, we're doing a consistent job across the curriculum and uh, all teachers are, are basically information literacy teachers and working from a, a similar curriculum and similar process and vocabulary. There was a time when you could send a child to do research and they'd go and look in an encyclopedia, they'd have one source, yes they had to rewrite it into their own words, but now with Google you get pages and pages and pages and people tend to take the first hit and see where it goes and they have to learn what to do with all of this information and that's where we need to not just find information but sort through it and analyze it and evaluate it and find a way to present it. I think it's about innovation, it's about creativity, it's about developing critical skills and thinking about how we use in school technology to aid our students get the skills they need for the future. I think we need to teach them to be comfortable with and competent with a whole range of different devices. They need to be able to criticize sources that they're using, analyze the appropriate source for the piece of information that they need to have. I think it's about helping them to use, and, uh, use tools to express their ideas. Um, and express their thoughts. I think they should also be taught to understand the implications and the impact of a digital world on society. STEM learning in the 21st century is about collaborative, interdisciplinary learning. It's very different than what we're doing now fixed within the classrooms. It has to be bigger, where students are involved with real-world issues, that they learn about what industries are working on, that they can be partnering up with industries, and that they feel that what they learn is immediately relevant to their personal futures, as well as to the world in which they live. It's a world of education that I see where mathematics and science and technology are all integrated and where it's the problem, the question that drives the learning that is into it as well as the students and the questions that the student has. And I welcome that. I think as a teacher of mathematics, very often we're confined within the curriculum, within the classroom, and this opening up is a tremendous opportunity which is really driven by the demands made upon us teachers. Um, for what the students need to know. If you start thinking about what we do in the course of uh, schooling on those subjects, we spend a disproportionate amount of time on science and mathematics and actually quite little time on technology and engineering. In other words, a lot of time is spent on the natural world in science, but very little time on the man-made world, the human world. 
And that's something that needs to be addressed. So, not only will, be, will there be an effort to teach a lot more technology and engineering, but also rethinking within mathematics, for instance, what are the branches of mathematics that are much more relevant to the world of today? Um, the most important thing I think we're trying to teach in science is how to think scientifically, how to analyse problems. If you look at what's on the board behind me, we're just trying to analyse the problem of electrical conduction by applying ideas of Newton's laws to it and see if we can come up with something that's sensible and matches our experience. So um, I would want students to go out of here quite sceptical when they look at scientific arguments in the world. The reason we study science is um, you know, studying biology. You're studying ourselves in a way. And I think it's a way to, for us to get to know ourselves and to get to know our world. The reason we study science is because the world is changing so rapidly that we need to keep up to date with the world. And it's not only keeping up to date, it's to learn. And learn more so you can develop your own knowledge. So maybe Newton at the time when he learned about the uh, gravity and everything, he thought of it in a different way. So he learned the basis for him to develop his theories. In Switzerland they decided after the Fukushima nuclear accident to phase out nuclear power over the next, I think, 20 to 30 years. That's what people have decided here. You know, is nuclear power dangerous? You need to sort of sit down and look at the evidence. Does, you know, is, that a, is the waste released from nuclear power harmful? And also, you should prob probably be weighing that against, um, you know, what are your alternatives? What are your alternatives? Nobody ever factors in the number of coal miners that die in coal mines every year when they're looking at nuclear, the nuclear industry. You know, but actually, if you replace a nuclear power station with a coal plant, lots of people die in mining accidents. Should that be factored in? So, I mean, usually we say no, because the... People are dying in the mining accidents to live somewhere else, and if the nuclear power plant blows up, it's going to affect us. But you see what I mean? You need to, you need, you need to be able to examine things in a rational and evidence-based way. important to know more about sciences in the 21st century because it plays a big role. For example, physics that can be used for engineering and without engineering we wouldn't have the transport system that we have today or like the civil engineering. Without that we wouldn't have the buildings as we have today. I think it's important to study sciences at school because it's an important part of the human development. I enjoy physics, definitely, um, and I think the best way to teach any kind of science is with practical application so you can understand how it's actually used in the real world for yourself and for um, scientists. So um, yeah, for any science, having um, experiments and things like this are the best way of teaching. I think it's also interesting to look at other people's work and learn from that. Uh, if the schools don't have the resources to go to, like CERN, for example.